The goal of this video is to provide an intuitive understanding of essential components of hyperbolic orbits that are needed to understand how spacecraft use flyby trajectories in our solar system to reach the outer planets using minimal amounts of fuel. They do this by performing flybys that rotate their velocity vector with respect to the sun, thus gaining energy in their heliocentric orbits. Now the animation here on the middle shows the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 trajectories around our solar system from around 1977 to 1990 using the published data from JPL via spice kernels. So they were able to tour the outer planets and even leave our solar system with very small amounts of fuel by performing very carefully planned and executed flybys of the outer gas giants, giving them massive boosts in their heliocentric orbital energy. And there are other examples of interesting hyperbolic orbits, such as the asteroid that was observed in 2017 that came from outside our solar system, Oumuamua. Given its trajectory that was observed, its past trajectory can be backpropagated to figure out that it did, in fact, not come from our solar system. This is the 41st video in the series, and this one will be going over what is a hyperbolic orbit, the Keplerian orbital elements definitions for hyperbolic orbits, V infinity, C3, and sphere of influence, and how they are very important values when doing analysis for planetary flybys, and also how these flybys conserve angular momentum and rotate a velocity vector before and after the flyby, and then a little bit also into the Voyager's trajectories. And I also have the Space Engineering Podcast on this channel, which is also available on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Simplecast, and I also have videos in Spanish on this channel, all of which I'll have links in the description too. So we'll start by defining what is a hyperbolic orbit. And hyperbolic orbits are very different than circular or elliptical orbits. So it's better to say trajectory than orbit, at least in my mind. So hyperbolic trajectories have enough energy that they are no longer bounded by the central body, thus will fly by it, only approaching it once. And because this trajectory is unbounded, and in the two-body problem, all that exists in the universe is a spacecraft and the central body, the spacecraft will continue on its trajectory until infinity, so it will never come back. So one of the things that comes from this is that the orbital period is no longer defined, since the trajectory does not repeat itself. Also, apoapsis is no longer the farthest point from the orbit, since that point is infinity for any hyperbolic orbit, so its definition changes. This also means that the definition of the semi-major axis changes, and it actually turned negative. So let's take a look at the geometry of hyperbolic trajectories and how three of the Keplerian orbital elements are defined. So of the total six Keplerian orbital elements, three are used to describe solely the orientation of an orbit with respect to the inertial frame, and these are the right ascension, inclination, and argument of periapsis. And these three remain the same for hyperbolic trajectories. The other three describe the size, which is a semi-major axis, the shape, which is the eccentricity, and position, which is the true anomaly. So let's start with the semi-major axis, which in the case of hyperbolic orbits, loses a bit of significance, at least in my mind, because the semi-major axis is defined as a distance from the periapsis to the center of the hyperbola, and is defined as a negative number. And for this reason, it's actually a bit more useful to think about the periapsis as a critical value of a hyperbolic trajectory, since it's tied to something real, which is the closest distance to the central body, and affects how much a trajectory will bend during a flyby. Apoapsis also kind of loses its meaning, since there is no farthest point from the center of the orbit, since it's infinity. So it's defined as a distance from the central body to the imaginary periapsis point in the imaginary orbit over here. Next is eccentricity, which is greater than 1 for hyperbolic orbits, and note that for circular orbits it's 0, for elliptical orbits it's between 0 and 1, and for hyperbolic orbits it's greater than 1. And the higher the eccentricity, basically the skinnier that this trajectory will be. So if you have an eccentricity of 2, the trajectory will go something like this, but if you have an eccentricity of 1.1, it'll do something like this, more of a U shape. And then true anomaly is actually defined pretty much the same as the angle between the vector pointing to periapsis and the position vector. So this angle right here. But notice that true anomaly will never reach 180 degrees since the trajectory is approaching its asymptote in this direction. 
So there exists a true anomaly infinity value, which I'll get to in another video, but the important thing to know is that true anomaly approaches some value and does not exceed it due to this asymptote here. So this position will never get to 180 degrees along this apse line. That just won't happen in a hyperbolic trajectory. But we can still relate periapsis, semi-major axis, and eccentricity using this equation right here, which applies to any type of orbit. In this case, eccentricity is greater than 1, which means that this expression will be negative. So 1 minus 2 will be negative 1. But semi-major axis is defined as a negative value for hyperbolic trajectories. So the periapsis here in this equation will still turn out to be a positive value. V infinity is one of the most important things to understand about hyperbolic trajectories and is critical for doing flybys. So V infinity is the velocity that the spacecraft has once it reaches infinity. So whatever amount of velocity that it takes to escape from the central body's gravitational pull, V infinity can be thought of as the excess velocity on top of that. So if V infinity was zero, then the spacecraft velocity would approach zero as its position approach infinity, which is a definition of a parabolic orbit. So whenever we talk about approaching infinity, this refers to the two body assumptions where all that exists in the universe is the spacecraft and a central body. But of course, in practice, there exists more than two bodies. So instead of infinity, we use sphere of influence, which I'll be covering in depth in the next video. So to calculate V infinity at any point, it is equal to the velocity of the spacecraft at any point in the orbit squared minus the velocity that it would take to escape at any point in the orbit squared. With the velocity of escape is equal to the square root of 2 mu over r, a very simple equation. So at any position r in the orbit, you can find the escape velocity, which will tell you the V infinity of the hyperbolic trajectory. And just as a side note, launch vehicles usually give a C3 value for how much payload that they, can, that they can deliver beyond Earth orbit, which is equal to V infinity squared and is known as characteristic energy. And just a quick note on planetary flybys, since the following videos will be going much more in depth into these, is that one of the most common misconceptions is that a flyby increases the magnitude of the velocity vector, which is false, and it's very important to understand this. So due to the conservation of angular momentum, the magnitude of the velocity vector cannot be increased. So what happens before and after a flyby is that the vector is rotated, but its magnitude stays the same. But this is extremely important because for orbits, the direction of the velocity vector, the direction is extremely important since recall that the angular momentum is a cross product of the position and the velocity vectors. So if you have some position and velocity vector and all of a sudden the velocity vector is rotated, that will create a change in the angular momentum even though the velocity magnitude did not change, which is what planetary flybys are, is that they change the direction of the velocity vector to increase their heliocentric energy. So that's pretty much it for this video. Be sure to hit like, subscribe, and share the video to be kept up to date with all the new videos coming out. And as I said before, the Space Engineering Podcast is available on this channel and on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Simplecast, all of which I'll have links in the description to. And let me know if there was anything confusing uh, about hyperbolic trajectories that I didn't cover. I certainly didn't cover everything, and I plan to cover more in the coming videos, which will be going over sphere of influence, patch conics, and then planetary flybys, just like the Voyager trajectory did. So that, that's pretty much it for this video. Leave any questions in the comments and thank you for watching.